Here I have something that I use for students, this power flow convention where you use certain signs for certain, let's say, a side of the power system. So you have a source side and then you have load side. The source side is, you can say, active because that's your generation there. And uh, load side is normally considered to be passive. The power normally flows from the source towards the load. When source gives the power or delivers power, we consider that power positive. And when load receives or consumes power, we also consider that as positive. And then you may ask, so how come positive is sometimes when it generates and sometimes when it consumes? And the answer is because we are using two different conventions. You may not necessarily be aware of those conventions. You may have been using signs for powers when you talk, when you do your calculations all the time, not realizing that you are actually using some of these conventions. Also, I have these, uh, you can say, equivalent statements. So you can say inductive load consumes reactive power. Now, we don't normally say it consumes positive reactive power. Because when something is positive, we omit saying. We just say, you know, the number. Just the normal language that we use omits to say that something is positive. But when we encounter negative stuff, then we do use word negative to emphasize that something is not positive. Normally, you would say, well, the inductive load consumes reactive power. And you would also say capacitive load delivers reactive power. But what you're actually changing here, because both are positive, what you're changing, you're changing this word from consume to deliver, which means you're now changing the convention. And uh, you probably wouldn't say inductive load delivers negative reactive power, because when you think of inductive load, you think of it as a load, and load consumes. So you wouldn't say something like this second statement, but... That second statement is correct. You can say something like that if you want. Inductive load delivers negative reactive power. That's perfectly fine. So similar goes with uh, capacitor, except with capacitor, we tend to see both of these, actually. We say capacitive load delivers reactive power, and then you would say, well, how come load delivers? Well, because it's not a load, because actually it's a generator of reactive power. Mathematically, when you work with complex numbers, you will find that capacitive load actually being a load and consuming power actually consumes negative reactive power. you got to be very precise when you express yourself. Are you talking about consuming or you're talking about delivering? Are you talking about generating or you're talking about uh, dissipating? There are many words, and some of them are synonyms, but some assume that the power flows away from an element. Some assume that the power flows towards an element, whatever that element is. A generator may be an element. The resistor may be an element. The inductor is an element. So this slide is just to bring some kind of a systemic approach in your mind as to what you really say when you say something. Anyway, those are the two conventions, and uh, when you want to be precise, you need to define basically what that element is. Is it a source or is it a load? And based on that, you would use one or the other sign convention, and then you would express yourself in one way or, or the other. So what's not highlighted here is still correct, but... Uh, <laughs> but we don't normally uh, use the negative uh, value. I tend to tell students, like you know, when I ask you how tall is a mountain, you will say 500 meters. When I uh, ask you how deep is the ocean, you would say 1,000 meters. What you do not realize is that my question, tall, gives a direction. 
my question deep gives a direction and both answers are positive <laughs> but they're in opposite direction i can easily say the mountain is minus 500 meters deep or the ocean is minus 1000 meters high but you wouldn't uh, say something like that especially not to an ordinary person because they would think you're just talking gibberish and again, uh, even though it's correct, you wouldn't say it that way. When you talk about mountain, you would always say positive value, assuming that mountain is high, not deep. And when you talk about ocean, you would also assume that the direction is down, so it's deep, not high. And that's why you get positive values. So exactly the same happens with currents, voltages, and powers. You assume certain uh, direction or polarity, and that determines how the positive or negative value that follows that is interpreted. Positive value by itself means nothing. Negative value by itself means nothing. If I tell you the battery power flow is 10 watts, 10 watts power flow, which direction? I didn't say direction. So I have to say battery is being charged with 10 watts or battery delivers 10 watts. Along with the value, and that value being positive or negative, along with it, I have to actually state what is the assumed direction. And then things can make sense. Without assumed direction, the number itself doesn't make sense. If I tell you current is 5 amps, again, which way? left or right, up or down, you don't know. So if I say uh, current goes up and it's 5, that means it's really going up. If I say current is going up minus 5, that means it's really going down. Because we're not used to talking negative numbers, then uh, it becomes quite confusing for people to use negative numbers and they get thrown away and then they don't understand what you've said if you say negative thing. So because we don't want to say negative numbers, then we change the reference. And then the same thing becomes positive. So because capacitive load consumes negative reactive power, and that's true, but we don't like negative reactive power, then we say, oh, capacitive load delivers reactive power. And now we change the reference, and now the reactive power became positive instead of negative. So there are two pieces of information. One is assumed direction. And the other one is actual direction. And if assumed is same as actual, then you get positive value. If assumed is opposite from actual, then you get negative value. That's something that relates to what's the physical interpretation of negative value. We sort of visualize that mountains are high and we visualize that oceans are deep. But what do you visualize about uh, power flow on a transmission line just have points A and B. Does it go from A to B or does it go from B to A? One is not better than the other. So you basically don't visualize anything. Because we don't have a normal reference in electrical engineering, we always have to make sure we define the reference. The battery has reference that goes away from battery because battery is the source. So battery delivers. And when it's being charged, it's being charged with the opposite power flow. But uh, normally, we would say uh, positive value all the time because we adopt references to make things positive.